Hello children, welcome to my YouTube channel, School Jaisa. Today we are going to talk about uh, chapter Metal Non Metal of class eight. Here I have written the learning objective of this chapter. Number one, what are metals and non metals? List the physical and properties of metals and non metals. List the chemical properties of metals and non metals. You four is uses of the metals and non metals. Alloys and corrosion. Okay. Now, before starting this chapter, we should have the knowledge of the another subtopic, another thing which is called matter. So, if we talk about the matter, so how will you explain? How will you define what matter is? We would have seen so many things present around us. They are just we can talk about the book. Copy, table, chair, and many more. Even we talk about ourselves. Why do we call them all these things as a matter? Because they are the two characteristics which has to be fulfilled for anything to be a matter. Number one, it should occupy the space, and the number two, it should have the mass or weight. So if we talk about the book. So if you are going to keep the book somewhere on the table, on the floor, or anywhere, we will observe that it is going to occupy the space. And if the book is going to be kept on the weighing machine, we will observe that it would be having some mass. Similarly, if we talk about ourselves, if I say I am a matter, how can I prove myself? I know that when I am going to be sitting somewhere on a table, or chair, or bed, or even on the floor. I will be occupying the space, and if I will be standing on the weighing machine, I will be having some mass. It may be 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, whatever it is. So if I can say that since I am fulfilling these two conditions, these two characteristics, so I can call it as a, I can be called it as a matter. Now this matter is classified on the basis of the physical properties. And the compositions or the chemical composition. If it is classified on the basis of the physical properties, as we see here, then they are solid, liquid, and gas. If they are classified on the basis of the chemical composition, then they can be element, compound and mixture. Another thing is, here we start with that of the chapter matter. Because matter, matter starts with element and then this element is grouped according to their physical and chemical properties. Then they are Either metals, non metals, metalloids, and can be the noble gases. So they can be called as a metals, non metalloids, non metals, metalloids, and the noble gases. So the thing is, how will you differentiate? Or how can you come to know which thing is going to be a matter or which thing or substance is going to be a non-matter? Generally, you all would have the perception, you all would be knowing in the class, previous class only, that metals are generally hard, which we see around us. And non-metals are generally soft. And sometimes we say that the metals are going to be having the shiny appearance. Non-metals are not going to have the shiny appearance. Exceptions are always. Exceptions are always there. For example, if we talk about the diamond, which is a part of the non-metal carbon, it is having a very bright appearance, shiny appearance. So it is an exception. Otherwise, if we talk about the metals and we say that they have the shiny appearance, so we can talk about any of the copper element, and we talk about the aluminium sheet, many more things are there which tells us that the metals are having the shiny appearance or they are lustrous. Where non metals are non lustrous or do not have the shiny. 
Now I should tell you all. I should turn my board so that I can explain you. So here I would like to explain about the differences between the metals and non-metal on the basis of their physical properties. Let's take the look of this board. Here I have mentioned each and everything very clearly, which I will be explaining. Here it is metal, and there it is written non-metal. Metals are generally hard and solid. We would have seen around us. If we talk about the iron piece, if we talk about the copper piece, if we talk about the aluminium and all that, many more things are there. Similarly, when we talk about the non-metal, they are soft, liquid, and gases. Exceptions are always that I told you right now. That carbon, which is a non-metal, and it's one of the form which we study later on, which is called allotrope, is the hardest known substance. So here it is an exception that. Although most of the non-metals are soft, but this is hardest known substance. Now we come to the second point, that is malleability. Now, before understanding the malleability, we should understand the meaning of malleability. Malleability is whenever you are going to take a small piece of the any other metal, such as iron or the copper or the aluminium, and you start doing the hammering. What will be your observation? The observation will be that it will. Turn into the form of the sheet. You would have seen the aluminium foil. You would have seen the copper sheet with which the utensils are made, and then so malleability is the phenomena or the property or the characteristics through which metal can be turned into the form of the sheets. So here we talk about the malleability. That is malleable over here. So exceptions are always there. So most of the metals are malleable. But when we talk about the exception, such as we talk about mercury, you would have seen that the mercury is going to be filled in the thermometer. It's not solid. So when it's not solid, it cannot be turned into the form of the sheet. If we talk about the sodium and potassium, they are very soft metals. So as soon as you do the hammering, they will break into the pieces. That means they are not malleable. And when we talk about the non-metal, they are non-malleable. Now we come to the third point. Ductile. Now again, we should understand what is ductile, what is ductility. So the phenomena in through which a metal can be turned into the form of wax, either by applying the force or extending it, or by stretching it, or through any machinery. If we are able to turn that metallic piece into wax, then we call it as ductile. So this phenomena is called ductility. You would have seen the. Chain of the gold. You would have seen the chain of the silver. You would have seen the chain of the iron, copper wire. You would have seen that the while doing the electrical transmission at our places, then the copper wire is used of the red, blue, green enamel coating one. Inside it is going to have the copper wire. So this copper, which is a metal, that was turned into the wire. So it is ductile. And when we talk about the non-metal, this is non-ductile. So non-ductile again exception carbon fibers are there which is not ductile which are ductile. Good conductor of fourth point is good conductor of heat and electricity exception. Again. If we talk about the good conductor of heat, then you would have seen that our food is going to be cooked at our places. Our parents or mother are going to cook food. What they do? They use a utensil. They put the vegetables or any of the food stuff into it. They put it on the burner and then they switch on the burner. The flame start giving the heat to the burner, through the burner, and that heat get transferred into the food stuff through the bottom. So what it tells that this metal is going to be definitely a good conductor of heat. This is the reason it is transferring the heat to the food present inside the utensil and food get cooked. Which tells us that metals are the good conductor of heat. And if we talk about the good conductor of electricity, you know the electric wiring which is going to be there in our places. There are the copper, and since the copper is a metal, so we can say copper is a metal which is the good conductor of electricity. So metals are the good conductor of electricity. And that we should know one more thing: silver is the best conductor of electricity. Now my question. Yes, anyone can ask the question. Then why silver is not going to be used as an electrical transmission line? Yes, we can, but it's going to be very expensive. 
So in place of it, copper wires are used. But when we talk about exceptions, so lead is the poor conductor, poorest conductor of acetic. Now we come to know about the non-metal bad conductor. Again, when we talk about exception, carbon, although a non-metal, but it's one form that I told you earlier, allotrope. Same like that of the diamond. It is also an allotrope of the carbon, which is a good conductor of electricity. Now we come to the fifth point. They are sonorous and they are non-sonorous. Sonorous means sonorosity, that is producing sound. We would have seen the school bell. When it's going to get struck with something, it produces sound. What it tells us? That metals are sonorous and non-metals are non-sonorous. Now tensile strength. One more point. When we talk about tensile strength, what is it? Since we have seen that when we try to turn the metallic substance into wire and we are stretching it, stretching it, stretching it either with our hand or with the help of definitely with our some machine piece or with some machine so it is not yet going to be broken what is that? It is going to have a good tensile strength non-metal do not have the good tensile strength 